owing to the operationalization of expenditure cuts announced since March. We are on course with expenditure rationalization efforts and will continue to enforce strict adherence to these measures across all MDAs whilst ensuring efficient delivery of public services. The Ghana Revenue Authority has intensified its efforts to show up domestic revenue mobilization, particularly in relation to the enforcement of compliance measures. The increased visibility of GR officials at shopping malls and various commercial establishments and our, at our borders across the country is in pursuit of meeting our revenue objectives. Such exercises form part of an ongoing drive to ensure we take significant steps forward in remedying long-standing challenges with domestic revenue mobilization, indiscipline, corruption, and leakages. Of course, heightened tax compliance and increased tax audit exercises will continue to be complemented by policy initiatives that allow us to tap into a wider pool of taxpayers in the years ahead. Um, towards this, therefore, um, we are looking at areas around the e-levy um, to ensure its efficient implementation. Overall, our growth outturn of 3.4% and impressive 4.8% in Q1 and Q2 of 2022 respectively, coupled with modest improvements in our fiscal position, suggest our economy is gradually on the upswing despite the numerous shocks we have faced over the past two years. These figures demonstrate that in spite of recent challenges, there has been economic growth, modest as the gains so far may be. This progress gives us a solid foundation to confront the challenges ahead. Undoubtedly, global risks remain on the horizon, including a strengthening US dollar and higher interest rates, which negatively affect external borrowing. This development is exerting enormous pressure on our balance of payment position and thus the need for us to expedite engagement with the IMF. Within this context, government is finalizing its post-COVID-19 economic program as a domestic blueprint to engage the IMF. This document has already benefited from input from key stakeholders, including civil society, social partners, labor, employers, and faith-based organizations, academia, industry professionals, and the leadership of parliament. Additional stakeholder engagements will be held to solicit further inputs for the program. Our economic program contains a set of time-bound structural reforms and fiscal consolidation measures to place our debt levels and fiscal accounts on a sustainable path over the medium term. The program is hinged on seven pillars, namely debt sustainability, fiscal consolidation, strengthening monetary and exchange rate policies, building strong financial institutions, macro-critical structural reforms, maintaining peace and security, and economic growth and transformation. The IMF negotiations. The formal negotiations for a fund-supported program began on Monday, September 26, 2022, and discussions are advancing smoothly. The IMF mission will cover a period of 10 days, and in line of His Excellency the President's dialogue with the IMF Managing Director, Kristalina Georgieva, negotiations will be fast-tracked to ensure the key aspects of the program are reflected in the 2023 annual budget statement in November 2022. Government is committed to ensuring that a comprehensive package is negotiated with the aim of restoring and sustaining macroeconomic stability, ensuring durable and inclusive growth, and promoting social protection. As stated in our press release dated 26 September 2022, on the commencement of the IMF negotiations, having a sustainable debt path is a prerequisite for the IMF program. Therefore, the IMF World Bank and the Ghana team are currently undertaking a debt sustainability analysis to inform the program negotiations. In addition, the IMF and government team are working to update the medium-term macrofiscal framework to inform IMF program design. Also, the government team and the IMF team are discussing policy measures and structural reforms proposed in our economic program aimed at addressing the economic challenges facing the country. 
towards restoring and sustaining macroeconomic stability, fiscal and debt sustainability, as well as promoting durable and inclusive growth and social protection. Ladies and gentlemen, we simply have not reached any agreement with the fund on the parameters of any debt operation as we are in the process of completing the debt sustainability analysis. Government shall continue to actively engage all stakeholders in a clear and transparent manner as we seek to fast track the IMF negotiation process. Ghana needs a viable domestic financial system to support its development program, especially in these three years with limited access to international capital markets. Therefore, everything must and will be done to protect our financial sector. And there must be room for a win-win conversation through extensive stakeholder engagement with both our domestic and external investors. Ghana has always had a collaborative approach with its partners, and we shall, I'm confident, come out of an historic arrangement. This is a government that protected the savings of 4.6 million Ghanaian depositors with the reform of the banking and financial sector. Even in our early days, we owe it to the economy and Ghanaians to keep protecting it. The sanctity and the well-functioning of the financial system is sacrosanct, and we need the support and trust of all Ghanaians to deliver this. Let us join hands to get this done. The great Celtic miracle in Ireland in the 80s was a result of such collaboration, especially with labor, and we shall also be blessed with the Ghana miracle. A five-member committee consisting of prominent financial services professionals will lead extensive stakeholder engagement across all the key segments of the financial sector, banking us, asset management, pensions, and insurance. The announcement of the committee members will be made in the coming days, and they will immediately get to work to engage key stakeholders in the financial services sector. Additional to ongoing engagements of civil society organizations, social partners, labor employers, and faith-based organizations, academia, industry professionals, and the leadership of parliament. We welcome all contributions to this great public debate, but we must be careful to build and not to tear down our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we will leverage on our strengths to rebuild the economy, focusing on our productive sectors. Initiatives such as the U-Start program that will provide a million jobs over the next three years will support entrepreneurs with loans to build their capacity to create more jobs and realize the present vision of a Ghana beyond aid and an entrepreneurial nation. The Development Bank of Ghana, which we capitalize at 750 million, is also supporting the private sector to invest in areas that will stabilize the economy over the medium to long term, with positive knock-on effects on job creation and economic growth. Taken together, we cannot lose sight of the remarkable progress we have made since the pandemic. And I believe that in the months to come, our robust policy approach response will help to considerably ease the challenges of inflation and the exchange rate pressures. I am extremely confident about where we'll land on this journey. We as a country have survived 142% inflation, yellow corn hysteria, mass exodus from our country, and more recently, a successful exit from the 2015 Ascender Credit Facility IMF program. So let us go for the spirit of courage, for the Lord is of this nation. Let us not fear, for he who is of us is greater than all. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I remind each and every one that Ghana is the only place we have. Its progress, its prosperity, is our collective duty. We have overcome many challenges and risen to the occasion many times. This is another challenge which we must overcome this too shall pass if we remain united and purposeful. Let us not forget that the battle is indeed the Lord's. As the book would said in Genesis 11:5, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Thank you very much for your attention. God bless you. God bless our nation and make it great and strong. Thank you.
Thank you so much for the insightful presentation, Honorable Minister. If you are joining this press briefing, we are live on GTV and Joy News. We are also streaming on Facebook at Ministry of Information and Ministry of Finance. It's so refreshing to note that, uh, as Honorable Minister mentioned, in spite of recent challenges, we are recording economic growth. That was one point that was really encouraging, and I believe that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. It's now time for Q&A. If you have any question, this is the best time to ask. If you show by hand, we'll bring the microphone to you. You mention your name and media house and then proceed to ask your question. Okay. So we'll take the first question from here. If there are any hands, okay. So. Um, please keep your questions brief and to the point, please. Thank you. My name is Maxwell Adumbula from Graphic. Minister, I, I noticed the optimism around getting a program by December, but our history shows us that uh, we normally would take about seven months minimum to, to get a program from time of announcement or engagement with the fund to the time we seal a, a program. What makes this time unique? Um, what, where is the optimism coming from that we can get a program by December and, and even we can have the November budget uh, coming from the IMF program? Thank you. Okay, my name is Ebenezer Sabote from JFM. Uh, my question, my first question is a bit related to his, my colleague's own. It has to do with the five-member committee that you indicated that you'll be forming. I'm just thinking, is that committee not going to, the work of the committee not going to delay the uh, program negotiations since the government is in a hurry in a way to get it done? That is one. And then secondly, I was thinking that you're going to give us some updates on the uh, previous press conference that you had. You did mention some uh, budget cutting measures that government was I mean undertaking like the moratorium on purchase of new vehicles and stuff I was thinking that you were going to give us an update on at least let's know the impact of that savings that we we have been able to you know done to the economy thank you thank you for the question please if there are any hands this is the best time to pick the questions otherwise I think that to be the last okay echo Thank you very much. <clears throat> My name is <coughs> Echo from Bloomberg. Um, one observation. I was happy to know that you said you're going to have more monthly monthly briefs, and so that would help. Um, it's very welcome. Thank you. Um, Honorable, you, you also mentioned about this, this board that or committee that you have put together. Uh, I didn't quite get the exact work they are going to do. Is it also going to be part of the, the DSA analysis that is ongoing? And I, I want a bit more clarity on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the question. If there are any hands, we can pick two more. If not, we go to Honorable Minister. Okay, Honorable Minister. Um, thank you very much indeed and, and, and welcome. Um, I think the issue um, of, of the timing is that, you know, we, we've seen uh, countries like Zambia, uh, rightly you have mentioned, uh, gone through a, a two-year um, negotiation by getting into the uh, common framework. Um, uh, and really, I don't think we as a country can afford uh, that type of uncertainty over that period. Um, and why are we hopeful that that will be different? Um, uh, because in the discussions um, that um, uh, I had um, uh, with um, uh, the managing director um, of, the, of the IMF, I mean, those were the specific issues um, that we talked about, how to fast track this um, so that we will get um, um, uh, into organizing ourselves a lot better. Uh, but, but more importantly um, was the meeting between His Excellency the President uh, and the Managing Director of the IMF um, in, in Rotterdam. Um, and it was very, very clear in terms of the commitment um, that um, the fund showed. Um, and um, she did say 
uh, that the, they were determined um, to reach um, an agreement by end of the year and that they've started constructive um, discussions with us. Um, the team is here uh, and they are here on a mission uh, but as the mission um, chief um, told us, um, this is not a mission of 10 days, um, it is a mission um, through the end of the year. Um, so there is increased um, intensity and in acknowledgement that this must be done. Um, with regards to the committee, I'm coming from all of you, and no, it will not delay. I mean, I, I think if I were to even listen to Bloomberg and Joy, you seem to have the answers for what this, this is going to entail. Um, um, so uh, within the, the confines um, of, of this period um, that we are in discussions, um, we will be able to um, come up. Um, we hope, we expect them to be able to come up um, with um, input ideas as to where we should be going. I mean, the truth of the matter is that um, uh, the, the variety uh, of options, you know, we can all, you know, think of them. Um, the issue is the um, idiosyncratic nature of our market uh, and making sure um, that um, whatever we do um, goes to create, uh, you know, a stronger uh, financial ecosystem um, than before. Uh, and the best way to do it um, is to have a committee of experts um, working with the stakeholders. Um, so that's good. Um, with regards to um, the issue of, um, of, of the budget um, in terms of the 30% uh, effect, um, uh, goods and services uh, I below, you know, target uh, by 41.4% uh, um, due to these cuts, uh, domestic capex uh, below target. Uh, by almost two-thirds, um, primarily due to these um, expenditure cuts uh, and overall expenditures uh, were below targets uh, by some 7%. Um, so we are making a headway uh, and the question is, you know, in a sense, how much more adjustment um, can one do? Um, I think the, the, the going forward um, I don't know, call Bloomberg, what did you ask? But, but I, I think, you know, uh, that also leads to sort of this critical period uh, in our economy and the question becomes what do we as citizens or as social commentators or as journalists do? Um, because it's, it's a very fragile period for our economy and global economy. Uh, I mean, the classical foundation of journalists, as you know, is, um, you know, to educate, uh, to inform, and to entertain, uh, in a sense. Uh, but uh, I recall that, um, I think it was uh, Pierre Viancin, uh, who said that in, in countries uh, developing with such fragility, uh, the underpinning uh, of all of this work um, that we, we do uh, must be one that always remembers social cohesion. And if we trip uh, beyond that, uh, we are not sure uh, whether we are educating, we are informing, uh, or we are entertaining to the peril of the society we are in. Um, so really caution um, to um, all of us as citizens, um, all of us as social commentators, um, the Bloombergs, etc. Um, which really uh, we must be um, very cautious about and really understand where uh, PAV and San was coming from, the need for social cohesion and to have the society we all would want to live in. Thank you very much. Can you take the mic? Okay. Um, thank you. Okay, let me take it again. Um, we still have, as a nation, we have people who have invested in us. They have given us bonds and what have you. So sometimes there is a very lag, a lag in the time that official information is made available, and then what the market is craving for at a critical time. 
this brings in a lot of analysts who say a lot of things. And so when it happens like that, and then we come to the official dom and there's a lag, that vacuum will be filled. This is not for me as a person, or even Bloomberg or any media house, but generally, I think that's why I recommended it, that monthly briefing is helping. If there's a way that frequent, more frequent, even on a maybe bi-weekly basis, there will be somebody to give briefs that will help everybody. Then whatever we, the official position that Ghana has on any position is quickly mentioned and it is known out there. That is just an um, a by, just a comment. I didn't get clarity on the committee you are putting together. Is it fair to say that this committee is also going to help lead in the DSA analysis? And that are all options available on the table, different forms of restructuring, if need be. You say we've not gotten there, we've not started yet. Help me with a, a line that clarifies this statement. We are putting together a committee to help do especially what and what options are on the table. Um. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Cole. I mean, the, um, the issue of um, information, um, I, I know you all journalists have uh, relationships, official and or unofficial, um, but for a major uh, article um, to be predicated on what may be uh, rumors in a sense uh, makes it difficult for me to accept that the gap created that uh, because you have a nation at your behest and um, it can trigger unintended consequences uh, because of that. Um, so, you know, we have engaged um, all stakeholders in this um, issue and um, some of them have written papers you know we had some very spirited discussions um, on Friday we were in Koforidua for example um, with the ranking and chairs of the various subcommittees to talk about that um, I think the financial um, subsector is a very um, special and important sector uh, and that is why uh, we're encouraging um, that type of setup um, so that um, their input, however uh, it happens, it will then be um, looked to incorporate in our discussions um, because it's important. I mean, uh, the DSA is happening, um, what does it throw out? It's a throughout the sense of fiscal adjustments. You know, you have a financing gap. And then you are going to split it between fiscal adjustment and your debt operations. Um, so uh, let us be informed uh, by what um, the financial, domestic financial system thinks is is, uh, is a way to go. Um, I think you've heard enough of various options that can be done. There's an article from J.P. Morgan. We we all know the variety of things that could be applied. Uh, but but I think it's important um, for the industry players um, to lead um, this whole discussion um, so that uh, we are well informed um, going forward. Um, so, so that really would be the remit um, so that there's a, a cohesive uh, and comprehensive way uh, in which we incorporate their views. Uh, but we are not um, um, predicting um, where things will go and um, I think until um, the um, DSA is done, you know, everything else is really speculative uh, and that's what we do. But the one clarity, as you can see in the statement, is that we know um, about um, ensuring that we have a strong domestic uh, investor community, which is you, me, everybody and the banks, um, so that um, we can depend on it, they'll be com confident. Uh, about the assets uh, being protected, uh, and we'll go forward together um, to resolve um, these issues.
So my name is Esther Edu and I'm coming from GBC News. So I'd like to know how does the latest fetch downgrade affect your negotiations with the IMF? And also we have a budget timetable for 2023 to be in November. And how soon will the IMF discussions and so not to disrupt the budget timetable for this year? Thank you for the question. Okay, the last question. All right, I'm Isaac Edu um, from the Finder newspaper. Um, Minister, from where you sit, how soon will we restore macroeconomic stability? How soon? Thank you. The Finder, that's a big question. Um, but but I, I think it's, it's really an excellent question. I mean, I think this is the, the, the 18th um, time that um, we are coming to the fund. Um, uh, and you, you, you look through um, the history of it, and you really, in the end, come to the realization that there are certain structural things that we must do, you know, as a country, if we are to move out um, of this, um, in and out of the um, tensile um, of the IMF. Um, uh, and, and I think that we, we need to take a view on that. I mean, yes, we need to address uh, our debt uh, issues um, so that uh, we can sustain and build to it. Uh, we need to look at uh, the way in which our compensation is going um, such that um, the ratios, you know, maybe come down to about 35% of our revenue, uh, which means our revenue uh, must considerably um, go up um, if you break down um, our wages um, and salaries and compensation, uh, you realize a majority um, of them um, earn very low um, incomes. Uh, and then uh, we have, uh, you know, maybe a, a much smaller minority, you know, um, I'm topping up to make this huge burden. Um, so how do we and uh, create more equality within that and get also more productivity um, to be able to, um, to change that um, equation. Um, and then there are areas such as our earmark funds. Um, I think we now have about 14 um, of them, um, which means that um, the government's revenue um, are already quote unquote earmarked before they are used. Um, and we need to examine those. Those were some of the issues that came up um, in, um, in Koforidua of the parliamentarians. And then you look at our foreign exchange issues and the question becomes why do we have um, these uh, retention agreements and shouldn't all of the resources um, um, of these um, companies, so oil or mining, and go through the Bank of Ghana as a matter of fact um, to reduce these foreign exchange pressures. Um, that's important. Uh, how do we move into an export-driven economy um, so that uh, we are not importing uh, food to the tune of $2 billion, but we are actually exporting food? Um, that's important. Why do we not have our own gold refinery um, to support um, central um, banks' um, policy decision now um, to be buying gold. Um, so those uh, become uh, important, important ways uh, in which um, we will then change the structure of economy so we don't go back um, to what is we are experiencing now. Um, the program um, likely will be three years and that's the period in which uh, we expect um, to climb out of this um, in a strong way and um, to have a strong economy. Um, going going forward. And with regards to timing, um, yes, the budget, um, God willing, um, should be read um, by November 15th, um, per the rules. Um, and so, yes, we are multitasking um, to ensure um, that all of these things uh, would enable will enable us to meet to meet those deadlines. Um, but but we will do it. Um, the issue of the Fitch um, downgrade, as you mentioned, um, is, um, is unfortunate uh, 
uh, in their email to us, um, they referred um, to uh, the Bloomberg article uh, that, that influenced their decision. Um, and so um, the downgrade has, well, it, it, it's sort of further depressed um, the, the bonds uh, on the international uh, market, uh, resulting in additional um, losses to, to investors. Um, I mean, once um, we got downgraded to triple C, uh, we are also expecting um, that um, the economic program um, that is going to be and work that is being worked on, uh, which will be the um, sort of the basis um, for the IMF discussions, um, uh, will then, you know, help us um, to to come back um, to some strong matrices um, to then be able to um, get um, our, uh, sovereign ratings revised uh, over that that period, and and we are confident that it will. Um, I, I think. Um, uh, returning uh, sort of access um, to the international um, capital market is going to take uh, a bit of time, um, two, three years. Uh, and so during that period, we'll work on our ratings also um, to be able um, to, to get there. I guess I will take your final remarks. Great. Well, let, let me really thank you um, for being here. Um, these uh, are difficult times, uh, but really um, uh, we are, you know, in the throes of the discussions um, with, with the fund. Um, things are going really well uh, in terms of where uh, we want to land um, uh, in three years. Um, the analysis uh, for the debt DSA, debt sustainability analysis, I know is rigorously going on. And that would inform us uh, by the end um, of these 10 days um, as to what uh, we are going to specifically do uh, in various areas, fiscal adjustment, um, structural reforms, um, debt operations, etc. Uh, but let's rest assured um, that as is want uh, for us to be a very collaborative society, um, we will work with our uh, domestic investors uh, as per through the committee. Um, work of our external investors uh, and come up with a win-win um, solution uh, that, as I mentioned, uh, will be an historic um, solution that has not been seen before. Um, we, we have gone through as a nation uh, very difficult moments and really we are very comfortable that it can be done. Uh, but going on this is also um, we reaching out and people reaching out to it. Uh, to us um, um, to build uh, in a constructive way uh, because that is really important uh, for us to have that peace and harmony, um, speak that one language uh, and um, ensure uh, that a black star is where it should be. Um, so yes, uh, I'm confident difficult periods, um, but we have done it before and the battle is indeed the Lord. We will get there. Thank you. Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister of State, Honorable Deputy Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the press, thank you so much for making time for this important exercise. And as Minister mentioned, this will happen more frequently so that we get to interact more and inform Ghanaians. Thank you and good morning. Minister Ken Oferiata addressing the nation as to how, uh, what they're doing to bring the nation, the economy back on track. He admitted that uh, we need to look at sustaining the debt in order uh, to be able to build from there. He says that the um, debt sustainability analysis is currently ongoing rigorously with the IMF team to determine what ought to be done going forward. He again says, uh, answering a question about when exactly we'll be out of the situation we are. He says the program with the IMF will take three years, and that is the period they expect that the economy will really be out of the current situation we are in. So we, they expect that it will take three years for us to really be on our feet again. He also mentioned that they have set up a five-member committee to engage st key stakeholders like the 
leadership in parliament, like CSOs and the financial sector, uh, to then be able to uh, help uh, come up with a very uh, good strategy on how we can be out of where we are now, on how this whole situation will affect investors. He says the stakeholders will engage the domestic investors as well as the foreign uh, investors to come out with a win-win situation such that it won't have any negative impact on anyone. Um, he mentioned that the U-Start program is uh, supporting entrepreneurs to create millions of jobs, as well as the Development Bank of Ghana, which is also supporting uh, businesses to enhance growth in the private sector. So that has been the engagement with uh, the press on how uh, the government is working to fix the economy. This is still News Desk on a Joy News Channel. We'll take a quick break. We will be back with more. Stay with us.